<laughs> okay, so recess, niches, niches, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, I've done a lot of them over the years, and I have to say, they are the biggest pain in the new know what. Uh, every single one of them is a unique situation. It's a challenge and something that you really have to plan ahead for if you want to make tiling uh, the fun part of the project. That's what I always say. Tiling should be the fun part of the project, but planning ahead for something like a, a recessed niche is definitely something that you have to do if you want to be able to not be completely frustrated and ruin your day. So I've definitely done many, many of them over the years. That was just a few of them that I've done. And uh, yeah, every single one of them is a challenge. And that's what we're going to be discussing tonight about recess niches, framing, planning, and kind of my strategy going about things. But hey, thanks so much for being here on this live stream. I really appreciate everybody that joins me. Give me a thumbs up on this video if you can, it helps it get out to other people. And it definitely keeps me motivated to continue to do them. But uh, be sure to leave any comments that you have or questions that you have throughout the project. Uh, we're gonna be going through some videos that I have pre-recorded, and then we're gonna discuss a lot of the things there afterwards. And so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. That again also helps the algorithm as well. So tonight, where it's all gonna be about uh, building these things and specifically in this basement bathroom. So if you can see behind me here, uh, this, I, um, I, we're finally moving along here. We have uh, the waterproofing up, we have the cement board up, and we got our tile ready to start installing here. So it's all white, and that's because it's uh, RDX 8 plus 9 waterproofing that I did over cement board. So it's kind of tough to, to see what we're really looking at here, but as you can see, my plan is to do some pebble stone. And then on the left wall here, uh, we're gonna be installing some a, a really nice little niche with a little overhang, a gr like a granite custom, uh, not granite, but it's actually quartz. So we're gonna make a wider ledge so we have a little bit more room for uh, all your accessories. So it's gonna be a really cool feature, but it's definitely something that's gonna take uh, you know, some planning ahead to be able to make sure this is in the right place and that you don't have any slivers. The big thing that you're trying to do with all tile work is trying to avoid those one inch slivers or anything that looks like it's forced or you didn't really plan ahead for. So, um, but yeah, so thanks Paul for being here on YouTube. Rick, thank you so much. So yeah, leave your comments in the questions there. And when I, when we're gonna be watching these videos, I'll probably pick out some that are relevant and, and we'll complete, you know, continue to discuss them. But anyways, uh, we're moving on to this prep tiling project. And uh, as you know, I am building this out the same time that I'm also doing my course. So if you want to see all the videos that are associated with this bathroom renovation project, you can join my DIY Geek membership. That includes all of my courses, including this one, and I'm continuing to build out. Once I'm done with this bathroom remodeling course, the basement one, that will be seven full courses that I have, and the price will go up. So if you join now, it, you'll get all uh, you know, the, the, what's I'm included in this basement bathroom, plus any future course that I also develop. So over time, anybody that joins this thing, it's just gonna be more valuable over time. So if you're a contractor, I think this is the course for you because, or, or the membership for you, should I should say, because, you know, as time moves on, I'm just doing different projects, trying out new, new uh, types of systems, uh, doing different tile designs, you know, and all of these things I'm gonna be sharing through a course format and it certainly keeps me organized, and that's one of the main reasons I do it, uh, because in the side of the course, I basically highlight everything step by step through the entire process. And um, you know, it's uh, basically going through, you know, in this basement bathroom. Okay, so we've already gone through all of this stuff probably on some of the live streams, but we have, we went over the location and layout. Uh, that's really important to consider where to locate a new basement bathroom because uh, the plumbing and a lot of different uh, aspects about it, you have to really plan ahead to make it uh, somewhat of an easy addition. I wouldn't say that any basement bathroom is actually easy. It's actually pretty challenging, especially when you're removing the concrete, which I go through and uh, rerouting all the plumbing. So, you know, if you didn't have an existing bathroom there and you didn't have uh, any existing plumbing, it's definitely gonna take uh, a lot of effort. And even if you've got everything demoed and all the concrete set up and you have your whole plan ready, you, you know, go ahead and hire a licensed plumber, have them do everything for you. You're going to really save yourself a ton of money making sure that they're, you know, doing most of that work, digging it out, getting everything set up, finding the old actual piping that's in the ground 
And then, you know, if you're overwhelmed by the plumbing process, hire a licensed plumber to do it. They're going to know there's not going to be any questions once you have the concrete torn up. Uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, he's going to easily know. There's no guesswork. Anytime there's guesswork, contractors are going to add on more money. Uh, most of the time, no one wants to hear, hey, it might be 3000 It could go up to 5000 No one's going to take your bid if you do that. So most of the time, contractors just bid out the whole thing and they overcharge for things that they don't understand that you, they might be getting into. And plumbers, you know, you have to do that. I mean, you have to do that. If you, if you don't know what's underneath the concrete, it might take you a lot longer to do. So, but I go through the whole process of installing the plumbing and, and, and removing the concrete and doing that. We go over installing a new concrete floor for this new foundation of a bathroom. Uh, we did heated flooring, so that was definitely a bonus, something that you can do if you do it yourself, uh, but just because it, it is, a, you know, it's an extra feature, but I think in a basement bathroom, it makes a lot of sense to have because you're, you know, your feet are always going to be cold down in the basement. It's never going to warm up. So I go through the whole system of making sure that you insulate that well so that you're not wasting all the electricity on it. Uh, go through a mud bed shower pan. You know, you might as well go curbless. I, to me, there's no sense in having a curb, especially when you're in a small bathroom like this. Uh, this is only 32 square feet, so four by eight. So why make it a fine space that's going to make it feel smaller? So that's why, uh, you know, doing a mud bed makes a lot of sense in these situations because you already have the concrete torn out. Now you're just sloping it down to the drain and making it a curbless entry. So it's really awesome. Uh, Going through all the water supplies, so making sure, depending on what faucets you install, making sure you're setting those valves and everything in the right location. We go over the rough in electrical. Everything's brand new, so we had to run all a new electrical. Uh, definitely a dedicated circuit for your heated flooring and a whole bunch of different tips on that. We went into my favorite vent fan, which was the Panasonic vent fan. Even though it's in a bathroom, a basement bathroom, you, you have to account for ventilation. It's actually in some ways even more important in a basement bathroom just because the humidity levels down in the, in the basement uh, can really do cause a lot of harm to uh, drywall and everything else that you put in there. And then so far I have a little bit of the insulation and drywall. Uh, I still don't have the full drywall put together because I'm trying to film all of this stuff. Uh, and then we got into the actual uh, cement board and, and waterproofing, which I'm still working on now. But I wanted to get into the framing aspect of a recessed niche. That's the main thing I wanted to do here. So uh, the first thing we have to do, though, is add some blocking. And it's just going to make more sense for me to start at this blocking section before we get into the niche. Uh, and the main reason that we have to do a little bit of block or uh, shimming out of this wall is because I did not pay attention to... Uh, the plumbing and the depth of the wall. So I had to add a add on half inch furring strips would actually ended up working out pretty well because it gave me a great uh, way to secure all my accessories, my mirrors by just using a whole sheet of half inch plywood. So let's get into this uh, video first on uh, furring out this wall so that you can get a better concept of why I have things the way that they are. So let me shrink this down and uh, We'll go over the shimming and blocking. Blocking really is, I mean, it makes your life easier. Just like the planning that we're gonna be doing on this uh, recessed niche, it just makes uh, everything else just a lot easier to install. Like, it, there's nothing worse than getting a call back for uh, a towel bar that fell out of the drywall wall. And I don't care what anybody says, if you're just putting anchors in the drywall for a towel bar, which is being used like every single time you take the shower, it's eventually gonna come loose. Even with a toggle bolt, it still sucks. You need to have some good framing behind here. So if you're doing this level of a renovation or addition, you might as well put some plywood back there so you can actually get some uh, anchors into that wall. Really makes a lot of sense to me. So, all right, I'm gonna take myself off here. We'll watch this a little bit. I'll keep an eye on the comments. Thanks so much for joining me here. All right, so we're gonna finish off the framing and then we're gonna get our drywall up and get prepared for our cement board as well. Keep in mind when you're framing, this is going to make everything easier later on. So for all your accessories, you know, hanging your mirror, even your light fixture, if you have blocking for all of these areas and you kind of have an idea of what you want to do, or even if you don't, just make sure that you have blocking kind of everywhere so you can easily screw in. There's nothing worse to me than having plug anchors and drywall. I mean, there are some good ones out there, but most of the time they don't last over time. And that's always the troublesome part. So if you're a contractor, Definitely put blocking. It's going to make everything last a lot longer. You won't get any callbacks 
about uh, any of your accessories falling out of the wall. So first thing is for the shower, we wanna make sure that we have blocking for our shower door. So we're gonna be simply just put a two by six flat ways in the wall right on the seam of where our shower door is going to be. All right, so in this circumstance, I have to shim out all of the, these walls about a half inch because my plumbing is still in the way of my drywall. So I'm gonna put furring strips on top of this, basically just half inch plywood. Uh, but blocking in a normal circumstance would be just pretty much just recessing some plywood with some blockers in the areas you need it. Now I am gonna have a mirror, I'm gonna have a light fixture. So I'm just gonna actually, and I wanna put some shelving over here eventually just for decoration or holding towels or whatever. So I'm just gonna put a sheet of plywood all the way across here. So then anywhere you screw, you can be able to anchor things in. So this is a really awesome tool. I can't believe I've had this forever. This is a crown stapler. So it takes staples, like inch and a half staples. This is really convenient for adding shims like this. Put this all the way across here. volume up here that is my new favorite tool by the way is that uh, Milwaukee stapler uh, but yeah you know this is a method that I do when I do closets for people too uh, if, you, if you're building out a closet it makes a lot of sense just to add a couple sheets of plywood around the entire uh, closet so that you have anchors everywhere you go now half inch plywood isn't necessarily like the strongest I really probably wouldn't put like a shower bench on something like that but for normal accessories like towel bars, your mirror, different things like that, no problem at all, for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, you know, it kind of was, uh, you know, I kind of messed up on where my wall was with that plumbing, uh, but it actually worked out for the better because now I have all this blocking for shelving and whatnot. So it really makes it kind of kind of nice in a way. So, but uh, you know, if, when you get into my course, I kind of highlight all these factors in here so that you don't have to watch another two, three minute video to get your answers. You can just briefly go through here. Uh, now, if I wasn't furring out the actual wall, I would just be adding blockers in between the studs and then uh, basically nailing plywood in between the studs and making it all flush with the existing wall. This is a really great way, especially for like grab bars in your shower, making sure that you have blocking anywhere within the area that somebody might want to have one. Uh, but again, this is basically for towel bars, makes it, you know, it's really just like the extra scrap that you basically have and uh, just using that three quarter inch strips to, to nail it together. Shower door blocking, you definitely don't want to forget that. Uh, you know, I've definitely done that in the past and it's not like the end of the world, except especially with a sliding shower door. Uh, the sliders have those big channels that go across the top, so it's not like super problematic. Uh, you can use plug anchors and the tile and everything and it'll work just fine. But if you're doing a swinging door of any sort, I definitely hike you, you have to have blocking behind those uh, swinging doors. They just, not, they're not gonna stay in place without having some serious blocking behind it. Cause just the weight of, if, especially if you're doing like a three eighths inch thick wide door um, or you know, three eighths inch thick glass door, that has a lot of weight to it, you know? And over time, it's just gonna end up wearing out those, those um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the plug anchors that you just have into the tile. So, but make sure everything's aligned with one another. That's really important just to make sure that you have a nice flat wall, especially the wall that we're gonna be tiling. And again, I have my uh, link in here to my favorite uh, crown stapler. My kids actually use this all the time to create all types of stuff. It's only inch and a half staples. Obviously you can get hurt with them as well, but it's great for half inch products like this or a three quarter inch product. You can get, get them nailed in pretty easily. Um, but yeah, I just went with the full sheet of Plywood, plywood has definitely re came down in price these days. So I'm not as, uh, you know, angry about it now. I mean, I think at the peak of the, uh, the price hike in 2021, these things were like 50 bucks a sheet. I think they're about $15 now. So we're getting back to some normalcy when it comes to that, which is definitely nice. Uh, but I also have in here being able to go over to my other courses because all of these kind of are somewhat linked together. So if you, had, if you wanted to see the tutorial on actually adding that blocking, you can go over to it. 
uh, pretty easily. So, and then every one of my courses, I have a comment section down below. I always really advise anybody who's in it to definitely um, ch leave a comment because it, any questions, any pictures that you can provide of your own situation is gonna help anybody else, else out that actually has a similar question. So, um, yeah. So, all right, so that was just a kind of a, a headliner of what was going on with the shimming because, you know, you'd be wondering why there's some plywood sticking on the edge of it, and that was the main reason. So now getting into the actual planning and framing and, and devising the plan for the recessed or the, for the, yeah, for the recessed shower niche. If, if anybody's bothered by my words of using niche, I understand. I'm sorry, but that's just... Uh, I can't get it out of my vocabulary. It's just the way it is. All right, so this one's about a seven minute video and this is gonna go through my thought processes and strategy on this particular shower. And it really, the strategy is kind of the same on most of them, but uh, you know, this was actually kind of, uh, you know, you get better and better at this stuff as time goes on. Uh, you know, you just end up learning from your own mistakes and uh, you, you know, you just basically get better over time on all of this stuff. And uh, yeah, the, the niches have always been one of the things that were always a big pain point. So anything I can do that I kind of to speed it up or make sure that I don't end up with a mistake with my tile layout, uh, this is the way to do it. So let's go ahead and watch this and I'll be checking out that chat. For our niche, we need to figure out where our tile layer is. So there's a couple of ways you can go about locating this. One, you can cut this in afterwards, but with cement board, that's actually kind of challenging. Not exactly fun. And I personally like to do all my waterproofing and then tile. I'm not going back to waterproofing again. So I really do like to try to figure out where my tile layer is gonna be at, make sure that the niche is a little bit bigger than what I need so that I can adjust my tile layout. So first thing is I'm gonna get a piece of wood here that dictates my whole length here. So this is the cement floor. We're gonna have a little bit of waterproofing, which a liquid membrane. That's really not gonna take up much more than a 16th of space. And we're actually gonna be doing the floor tile afterwards. So this is pretty much an accurate measurement from the floor to ceiling because of the cement board. We're gonna be also tiling the ceiling as well. So we're gonna use this little strip of quarter inch lawn to reference our total height and then we can determine where our grout joint is gonna be. I find this to be easiest just to kind of lay everything out, get an idea of you know, what the cuts are gonna look like and visualize that. Okay, so I have all my tile and we're just really making this a pretty basic layout. Just basically these three by 12s all the way along. So let's just go ahead and put all these out here and then we'll put the spacers in and we'll kind of determine what we're gonna be starting out with. Okay, so I know that's time consuming, but you only have to do this once really. So this is gonna be our full length here. So let's just try to look, look see what this looks like. We try to even it out so it's about the same on either side. So if we took an inch off of each side, yeah, one inch off each side, that's gonna work out great. So we'll basically have a two inch piece in at the bottom and the top. So. You know, something this small, I mean, this is only three inches. So if you can get like a two inch piece, I think that's gonna look great. Now, obviously we're gonna have the, t the floor tile that's gonna be about a half inch coming up on that first row. So that first row really is gonna look like inch and a half. Um, so if you did want to adjust for that, you could bring this down a little bit more. If we make this, let's just make that three quarters of an inch and then this one a whole inch, then you have a two inch piece at the top and by the time you get your tile on, you'll have the same on the bottom. But this is really gonna give you accuracy because this is exactly the way I'm gonna be laying it out on the floor. So there should be no reason that this should grow or do anything different than what this is. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, you, you should just make sure that you reference every side of the wall, make sure that you're about average on the uh, height and we can go with that. So I'm gonna make a reference point that we're gonna start with a two and a quarter inch piece of tile. As far as the niche goes, this is all personal preference. So you can just make it at whatever height that you feel comfortable with. And I should mention, uh, I should mention that I actually, uh, I forgot that I was doing the ceiling. So it was gonna be equal no matter what. So I scratched that idea of adding a little bit more uh, at the base to make it look even because uh, I'm gonna have the shower tile at, uh, at the, the tile above on the ceiling as well. So it'll be about the same thickness as well. So, but yeah, doing a story poll that somebody mentioned that's what it's called. And I, I was like, wow, that's, that's exactly what it is. It's a story poll. Uh, you know, that really helps out. It's really the best way to go about it in my mind is to just have something like that to really gauge and make sure. Because a lot of times tile is not completely even on uh, the actual edges of the tile. So when you put your spacer in, it could be more than what you're measuring. So, that, you know, almost any shower that I've ever done, unless it was like rectified, like completely square marble tile or something like that, have I ever been able to like mathematically make sure everything works out to where it is. So, I don't know. It's to me, it just makes a lot of sense, especially with the tile like that. That tile was definitely imperfected. It wasn't perfect. It didn't have, you know, at first it didn't have square edges, but it also had kind of a, an un unsquare edge all the way around kind of makes it doesn't look like it's not handmade but it kind of looks like it so that even makes it even kind of worse so spacing it all out will give you a good gauge on it and um, as you'll see here we're going to make sure that we overcompensate so that we can make sure that we have a good um, you know a good amount of extra so that we have some wiggle room when we actually install it but I just wanted to mention yeah we're doing a ceiling tile as well so it is going to equal out. You know, maybe we'll just even reference off of our shower valves to the bottom. I mean, it really doesn't really matter. 42 and a half to the floor. Because what I was thinking about doing was mitering the edges that come into the niche. Just having that bottom sill and then these all mitered oh, really? around. Okay. So we're just going to go 16 tall. So it's not going to be overly tall but it's going to be able to be able to get all of your accessories comfortable so if we went with 42 and a half we need to reference where that is going to be on our grout joint and that actually works out pretty well because it comes right at a grout joint so if you want to make it 42 my recommendation or 42 and a half I should say is you need to account for your tile so we're going to just say 3 8 with thin set We'll just make it half inch with thin set, just to make it easy. So half inch with thin set, and then we have our backer board, and then uh, we're gonna have our countertop, but that's gonna be on top of that. So basically one inch minus below your 42 and a half mark. So that's gonna be where our rough framing is gonna be. Now I would recommend again, taking another half inch, because you could always build this up and be able to get the tile to lay the, the work right but you can't you know if your if your grout joint on your tile come right here and you have this sliver you're going to have to cut out your framing and lower everything so if we're going to go 42 and a half we're going to make our total niche 40 and a half inches is going to be basically our rough end frame we're going to have like an inch and a half of play basically on there So just make sure everything's aligned. As far as the height goes, try to make this 16 inches for the tile and the backer board. Got an extra half inch for wiggle room and inch and a quarter countertop. From here, we want to be 16. And then with our tile and our backer board, it's going to be another inch. Again, let's give ourselves another inch of room. So two inches. So off of this framing, 20 and a half. Yeah, so that, that should be where our tile layer is, is that actually 59 inches. So that's right in the half, and right in half of where we'd be bending around. I'm gonna say we either raise it or lower it so that we can get almost like a full tile at the top. Because it's gonna look better to have like a full tile at the top. So we'll make that 61. So, you know, this is all custom, so you can make it whatever you want. So we're just gonna make it a little bit taller so that we can get a wider uh, top. I don't want to cut that in half. Plus, 
I'm planning on mitering everything. So mitering right in the middle of a tile is gonna be pretty difficult. So if this is where we wanna have our bend going into the shower, let's bring this up two inches for our framing so we have plenty of room to build out. So this is gonna be what we're gonna put our rough end framing at. So on this end of the scenario, this is the edge of our wall here, 36 inches is gonna be the, the whole width of the actual tile layer of the shower. And we wanna fold this, we're basically gonna cut this on a 45 to go in. So we're gonna give ourselves plenty of room here. So we're gonna leave this framing the way it is, inch and a half overhang. Basically we're gonna have inch and, uh, basically one inch with the tile and backer board. And then we have an extra half inch of wiggle room to be able to build this up. You could always build up the side of the niche. You just can't go the other way around or it's a lot more work. On this side, we're gonna do the same. So we're basically gonna have three quarters of an inch with the backer board and tile here. So that's the edge of our tile. And we're gonna go over one and a half inches. Again, one inch is tile and backer board, half inch for extra room. Okay, so all those words just to basically express that you want to make everything a, a bit bigger to make, so that you can overcome it. You could always build out the inside of the niche to make it fit your tile layout, but you really have to think about this. You really have to take your time. A story stick or a story pull uh, <laughs> is probably the best way to go about that. It makes it a little bit easier to really visualize where that's going to be. And it is kind of somewhat a little bit more critical on these smaller tiles. These three by 12 tiles, you know, you don't really have a lot of flexibility and especially if you're gonna to try to miter them uh, around the top, like trying to cut a tile straight down the middle and then do a miter, you're gonna end up having chips on that tile. So I always like to try to have my factory edges and just miter the back of it uh, so that, you know, you're basically not cutting the 45 on the face of the tile, especially some of these ceramics, they can be very, very de delicate. So you have to give yourself even a little bit more room with that. And hey, even if you're like an inch completely off, like as far as much wider, you can always add in another piece of backer board. You already did all the waterproofing after this. So anything that you put in there is not gonna, it's not gonna, it's just filler basically. So most, most tile manufacturers or thin set manufacturers only want you to be a half inch thick with their thin set. You know, I've had some areas where I've had to do three quarter inch uh, worth a thin set. But if you do end up getting to that one inch mark, that's when I'll, I'll add in a piece of cement board or maybe even sandwich in another piece of tile. It doesn't really matter just as long as uh, I can build that out to make it work. But that's, you know, really the, the biggest concept here is just making sure that you give yourself an extra inch uh, so that you can really have the flexibility to, to make that look like it's perfect. You know, it's really, uh, you know, there's nothing worse than having that sliver around the niche and again if you have to like dig into this framing and make it bigger at the moment um, it can be really painful but we're going to go through some other scenarios as well uh, of, of strategies as well but I noticed on here that uh, I don't know if it was Mark or John was talking about Schluter you know the pre-made niches and things like that definitely uh, a faster way of getting things waterproof but I think the way what John had mentioned is like how expensive all that stuff is that definitely is I don't most of the time, I don't really use the pre-made stuff unless I'm kind of demonstrating the installation. It, you know, I, there's always extra backer board when you're doing these showers. So I think just being able to cut it and, and make it custom made to what you want it is just a better way to go. Uh, and is, you're not spending a, an extra hundred dollars for a, a shower niche and you're not defined by, you know, the box that they, they sell you. So there's a lot of reasons to, uh, to not you know, go out and purchase a shower niche that's pre-made. And, and I just don't see really the point in a lot of ways because you always have that extra uh, supplies laying around. So, but again, just laying it out, spacing it out, using a story pole, story stick. I think you said that. I think Mark on YouTube was saying that uh, a story stick, story pole tells the gospel truth. So whatever, <laughs> that's, I find that funny. But yeah, no, it's just uh, just basically a template to, to get you to visualize where everything's going to be. Um, and again, this is all custom. So you can do really whatever you want. Um, and uh, just be sure to make those deductions. The half inch for the backer board, 
uh, the half inch for the tile and thin set if you're only doing like, you know, quarter inch tile and then one inch, get, get that extra inch so that you can be able to overcome that. So, um, and you know, these lasers are really awesome. I can't believe I didn't put that in here. I'm gonna actually add, make a note here to add the laser into this part of the course. But I bought one of these um, uh, Hooper, H-U-E-P-A-R, uh, off of Amazon, 126 bucks. Really uh, great investment, uh, the green lasers. Um, really, I don't even know how I used to do stuff without lasers. I mean, obviously I just did levels and plumb mark or, you know, level lines and plumb marks, but man, these lasers just make everything so, so much easier to, to use and do things. Um, and then, you know, back on the, on the back part of this, you know, you need to have some kind of blocking so that you could screw in your cement board or whatnot. But in here on my course here, I have what, one, two, three, four different, uh, videos that I piggyback on to go and look at uh, different systems or different uh, scenarios and install these niche. So this is one of the, the shower niches. Here, I'll just click on this. I think this is probably a hundred bucks. My guess is $135. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's getting a little ridiculous. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons not to buy that, but you know, each one of my courses has a different uh, niche set up so that uh, you can really kind of uh, go through and find the one that actually fits your situation. There's no sense I'm watching a video on something that's not going to even look like the one you're installing. Uh, and that's, you know, over time, I'm going to end up having a lot of other videos that kind of show everything. So, um, so Mark, you bought a laser because of me off of YouTube. Thanks. Yeah, good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're going to use that for all types of things, installing your accessories, installing all your extra, or even your cabinets. You know, I even like, I like to shoot that right on my vanity cabinet when I'm installing and make sure that it's staying level. Um, so we're gonna go into another scenario on another one of my courses. This is the tub and shower in seven days. I actually do it in seven days and I demonstrate the entire uh, plan of doing this. So it's definitely an aggressive schedule, uh, but I highlight this in a, a seven day fashion. So let me get my head out of the way and you can see the curriculum here. So. You basically, I basically have everything down to what you want to do and the, the method that you want to go about doing this to be able to accomplish this in seven days. And this is, this is tearing everything down to the studs and, and completely refinishing the bathroom. So this is a complete gut start to finish with a tiled uh, back tub surround. Now, this is a tub, so you know a, a tiled shower is actually going to end up taking you a little bit more time because the tiling of the shower and the shower pan and most likely if you had an existing tub, you're converting you know, a tub to a shower. So there's definitely additional plumbing work there as well. So, um, but yeah, so, all right, let's get into this next one here. So this is just uh, a corner niche, 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 uh, that we have in a tub surround. This is very popular, uh, especially when you have an exterior wall uh, on the back wall of your shower. So that's one thing about placement of shower niches. You don't wanna be on an exterior wall. You're not gonna have enough R value, enough insulation behind them, especially if you're in a cold climate, it's up to like here up, up north, you're gonna end up having uh, shrinkage and expansion and contraction of that wall and causing cracks in your grout joints. And you know, you know, it's obviously gonna be feeling cold or hot depending on uh, the time of year. So definitely don't, you know, unless you have like a two by eight outside wall of some sort or you frame on the inside, you really mostly don't want to go in an outside exterior wall. Uh, you want to be doing them on the inside. So this location that I'm going to be installing one on this tub does make a lot of sense. And it's actually very convenient. You'll, go, you'll see the reasons why here shortly. So we're going to be putting a, a recessed niche and this client wanted one in the, in the corner. So Obviously, this wasn't an exterior wall, so you could put a niche anywhere in this wall. It also wasn't load bearing, so it wasn't a big deal to do it back here, but they actually just wanted kind of things kind of hidden in the corner of the tub surround. That is one thing about niches. You know, you, you make a really beautiful niche and then you just junk it up with all your stuff and that's all you see. So having it hidden in the corner really does make a lot of sense, but we don't have all that much room. Um, you know, like our center of our shower valve is about 14 and three quarter this is a 30 inch tub so it's not going to leave a whole lot of room for a niche but what i want to do is cut out the the studs and create a corner niche and what i prefer 
is the wall tile on this wall going straight into the the niche so we're going to be taking out this two by four as well in order to to restructure it what i always recommend on is to go down around the tub so at least going a couple inches down below so that you can make this corner very nice if you were just to keep this straight right here you would have just some one tiny little sliver of tile that you would be creating out of the piece below this so i think it is better to bring it halfway down and then just create that whole curvature of the tub so that you have a nice caulk joint to go against having at least two inches going down below the tub so what i would recommend is just taking your tile and just marking it up the wall this is this is a grout line right here so let's put our laser accurately on there okay so this is this is the edge of this is a grout joint right here i don't want to sliver up against my bull nose tile so my bull nose is going to be coming down an inch and a half so that would leave me yeah basically a four and a half inch piece below so that's not that's not bad that gives me a good reference point you just don't want to have a, a like an l, an l cut where you're just like having a small sliver at the bottom you know? give ourselves some room we, we'll give ourselves a half inch for tile and then we'll give ourselves a half inch for backer board okay so that's one inch and then we want to reduce this down an inch and a half so this will be where we cut our cut marks here so this will be another towel joint here simplest thing again is to find where your grout joint is being going to be at the top and then subtract just give yourself a half inch of room for tile half inch backer board and then your two by four so we'll have inch and a half bull nose that's going to come up so we're going to have plenty of room around that niche so you'll have like a four inch l notch piece that will go around the top of that so that's perfectly fine like i said you just want to avoid a sliver above it okay so i won't bore you into the actual framing portion of it but uh we did go board on this particular shower niche and uh yeah so it worked out really well uh, again just kind of planning making it a little bit bigger than what you need it uh, is really helpful and then as you can see it really kind of is a great location because it hides it in the corner of the shower and uh, I think it makes a lot of sense because you know like I was mentioning you're always kind of putting all your stuff there if you have it right on the back wall you kind of have it showcased for everybody to see but I liked what corner contractors on uh, Facebook had said he said spacers don't lie uh, I'm telling you I have a homeowner that is an engineer he's measured the layout five times with la three lasers I let them put it, put the marks out. Then I did the, my dry layout with spacers. And uh, by, the time, by the time he was done, he was scratching his head. The tape and lasers only get you so far. And then the dry layout is key. You're absolutely right, co uh, Cornerstone contractors. Um, you know, those spacers have, you know, it, it always depends on the edge of the tile. You can try to measure them the best you can. But visualizing it and putting it together really makes the most sense. And uh, I hear you on the engineers. Um, obviously, really, uh, we're all fortunate to have engineers out there and architects, but some of them can be some of the toughest customers to work for because uh, they're always smarter than you. You know, we're just contractors, you know, so you have to kind of bite your tongue a lot of times when you're working for people like that. And uh, yeah, just show them straight up. This is, uh, you know, when I drew my dry layout, what do you want me to do? There's nothing I can do. I'm just going to do the best that I can. And, uh, you know, you have to accept that. Uh, you know, we kind of have a little bit more experience in this realm. So anyways, yeah, uh, let me see here. So yeah, so that was just a corner niche there. Um, and you know, those are very popular. I've, I've done a lot of those type of styles, really uh, well worth it. But I do have the tub, the shower, bathroom remodel in seven days or less. I think this is a great uh, course for any contractors getting into this space, because if you can try to get yourself into a seven day um, process of doing something like this you can really be making some good money and, and be able to take some time off in the summers or in the winters and 
and uh, you know be able to have enough money to go around to to enjoy yourself. Uh, you know, because if you could get a method together and a strategy together to do this in that kind of time, I mean, you're going to be making a good you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a day. I mean, who knows where the market is by next year? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we'll be all charging three grand a, a, a day just to keep up with things. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's you know, bathroom modeling is definitely an expensive uh, endeavor, and that's that's the main reason I got into it as a contractor because it's I think it's the most valuable and expensive part of your home, and. Um, you know, and everyone has, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people have more than one. So you get one bathroom job and you get to get to do the next one at some point down the road. So this one, this is another short video here. I have here, these next cup, these next two are only about three minutes long, but I kind of wanted to give you an array of different um, methods or different scenarios so you can kind of get uh, an idea. But this one, I actually ended up uh, cutting in afterwards and it's definitely a method. It's definitely something that will prevent you from having those slivers. I just personally don't like it. I find it to be a real pain in the neck because I'm in the middle of tiling and I don't really want to have to get into carpentry again at that point. But that's just all. That's just me on that one. But you'll see how I went about this one, and hopefully this uh, gives you some a different option on how to go about doing this. So let me shrink this down again. What the heck's going on here? Uh, Somehow I need to get this all set up so I can just press it and go. Um, right. 16 is the center of where our faucet is. And I want to put a small niche on the side. So I want to give myself enough room here so that I have room for my faucet. So I'm going to put another stud here. We'll probably just make our niche like 10 inches wide. So what we'll be doing is I'm going to leave the stud here and then when we figure out where the placement is, we'll cut this stud and that'll be like a recessed niche going in here. So, so we're just gonna make it 10 inches and that'll give us about six inches of room on either side of that faucet, which is about what I need. So I'm gonna put another stud here and then another one here because you wanna be having your backer board have 16 inches on center. All right, so we're gonna go one more row and then we're gonna cut in our niche. Yeah, I think that'll be a good height it's kind of, you know, when you're standing up, you'll be able to put your stuff here. Possibly when you're sitting down, you'll be able to be able to still reach that area. It'll wrap around that corner nicely and basically go into the niche. Let's go ahead and check what we're going to be at the top here. So we'll put our leveling clips in here so that we're 100% accurate. Okay, so that's essentially where we're going to be at the top here. Let's drop this an inch. What you have to do is cut this out. Now, granted, this is not a load bearing wall. This was just basically to frame this in. So we won't have any concerns about really structurally. Um, it's just a matter of cutting that out so that we can allow this surface to go all the way into the niche. So we'll just have to fold the corner around it. And you can put in your corners. So we're gonna put our radius bull nose here and we're going to overhang it. So we've got plenty of room underneath it here, but what I'm going to be concentrating on now is just getting this area framed up with this as I work my way up, and then I'll worry about the niche. I might even do the niche tomorrow as far as the tiling in it. Because um, you can easily just build up the sides and the bottom to meet this. Uh, but at this point, I just want to get the rest of the tile up. So yeah, that... Um 
that method I personally did not like. I did not like getting into that carpentry, but there's a couple of things that go going on in that particular bathroom that I didn't like. I didn't really like using the sheet membrane. I thought it was a real pain in the neck, especially around niches like that. It's a real, it's it's just a it's just not a fun method to uh, have to waterproof things. You end up having overlap and a uh, bunch of different things. So when you're doing membranes like that, you definitely have to account for additional space. So because the membranes overlap each other and you need to be able to build up and make all that tile look up work great. But I really did love the way it turned out. I mean, it did look like it was perfectly done uh, with uh, the grout joints lining up with the, the niches and everything. So, you know, it's definitely a great method. It definitely kept me uh, on par as far as making sure I was in the right location. In some ways, it's a little bit foolproof that way. But, uh, you know, the, I guess it was maybe just the, the cutting into the the studs and I mean I'm in the middle of tiling I have my thin set out and everything and then I'm trying to do all of that it was kind of a real pain in the neck but I wanted to give a shout out to uh, one fast hatching on YouTube thanks so much for the super chat I really appreciate it he says thanks for the delta valve video showing the depth in the wall and the tips and the tricks yeah so you know if uh, guys here on Facebook definitely check out my YouTube channel I go in depth on a lot more detail than I do anything that I have on Facebook just because the time length of the videos and stuff. But I definitely get into uh, shower valve depth, different problems have that. That's almost just kind of like the same scenario of planning ahead, especially showers like this. This is a, um, a popular like sh Amazon shower valve system. And these are very, very problematic when it comes to the depth of where you need to set those ports. So. Definitely have a lot of videos demonstrating a lot of different shower faucet systems and things to look out for. So if you're putting in your own shower faucet, definitely check it out. But Ruben Andrew on Facebook asked, after watching your videos, I noticed you use different methods of backboard and waterproofing methods. Uh, which one, how do you go about deciding that? So in this, that's a great question. And, and a lot of it is just kind of demonstrating each one um, and, and, and providing content. I mean, obviously if I just did nothing but go board, it would kind of get boring after a while, but, um, you know, and having different scenarios, uh, you know, th there are some ways, reasons I use one after from another. So for instance, this basement bathroom, to me, it made a lot of sense to do a liquid waterproofing. I'm doing a curbless shower. I'm over concrete. The best method for waterproofing a curbless shower that's that's a mortar bed and concrete, I think, is liquid membrane. So we did the Ardex 8, 8 Plus 9 on this. And my thoughts were, since I'm already buying it for the floor, I might as well just use cement board and just waterproof the whole thing. Uh, so, you know, I could have definitely done some, like, go board or some kind of foam board in the shower area and just bought one bucket of that for, or one, you know, system of the eight plus nine for the shower floor and been totally fine. Uh, some considerations you might want to think about when you're doing that is that you want to, you know, a lot of these manufacturers only warrant their system. So it has to be all of their stuff or nothing. So keep that in mind, like, you know, Schluter's a big one with that. If you used go board and use Schluter membranes, they're going to say, Hey, we're not going to guarantee yet because you used a, a different type of wall board. So, I mean, if that even matters to you, I mean, the warranty is really, uh, from the companies, uh, for the most part, don't really mean that much to me because, um, you know, since when has a warrant, I, I've never had a, a single warranty ever work in my favor for anything. But, uh, you know, most of these systems that I, I'm recommending are, are really well, good quality products. And I, you know, you really shouldn't have an issue if you're installing them correctly. Most of the time, if they do have a problem, it is the, 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 the wrong installation of some sort. So in this scenario for the basement, I thought the liquid waterproofing just made a lot of sense. And you might as well just save a little bit of money on, on the backer board or the foam backer board and doing that. But other scenarios, uh, like the sheet membrane that I did in this shower, uh, you know, that was just really kind of like, it was inexpensive, um, you know, the price was right. I think I only paid like 140 bucks per roll. I had to get two rolls. So it was like 300 bucks to do the, all the waterproofing around this tub shower because I use drywall as the backer board and you can do that. Um, but again, I, I just don't think I'm going to do that again. I, I, I really dislike the, uh, uh, the sheet membrane application. It's messy. Uh, it works great, but it's just a real pain in the neck. So you probably won't see me doing too many more membranes in the future just because it's just not a, a very enjoyable process. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's just really trying out the different systems. So like if you bought, um, 
you know, a different uh, linear drain system, you might as well just go with that whole system that it comes with because, you know, a lot of these big, some of the big things that are different between one waterproofing and another is the drain assembly and how they function. And, you know, so it really does come down to the style and the design that you end up wanting. So uh, that, that is another reason. But if, if I was just doing nothing but just, you know, ordinary showers, maybe even like this, I probably would just go with a foam board, you know, whatever is really the cheapest. Go board is really reasonably priced, uh, 30 bucks a sheet. I mean, that's not, that's, you know, that it sounds crazy. That's, that's reasonable these days. But that is kind of reasonable compared to, you know, even cement boards, I, I think I looked up the other day, was about $13 a sheet. And then I did the liquid waterproofing over top. So I didn't really save any money in this basement bathroom doing the liquid waterproofing. Um, it's just that everything is all the same. So, I, you know, it doesn't really answer your question there, Ruben. But, uh, you know, there's just a lot of different systems out there. Some people can't get some of this foam board. We had a lot of shortages out there. So that's kind of why I, I went with the sheet membranes. Uh, and then, you know, the, you know, everyone can get pretty much get cement board. I don't think they even had a shortage on that. So that makes, you know, um, uh, cement board is always going to have the, the test of time behind it most likely. And, uh, just doing a liquid waterproofing on it makes a lot of sense. So I just want to show you one more here. Uh, and this is pretty much, uh, a, pretty much the simplest. Now I was just mentioning, I don't really buy too many pre-made niches, but this, it definitely does. Uh, speed up the process of installation and if you have a tile layout that is not too demanding then these are some of the quickest ways to go about it uh, this particular tile layout was really simple and it really didn't take much thought or effort just a matter of you know making sure that you're again setting this in a location where you're going to have enough the tile layer to, to overcome the bottom and the side so that you don't end up with any issues so let's watch this one and then uh, i'll see what's going on in the chat and uh Hopefully this is informative to you and has helped you out. Niche placement. It's really important to go over your tile layout at this stage because it's just gonna make it easier the following day when you actually go to tile. The whole back wall is gonna be nothing but vertical planks going up and down the wall. And it would be ideal if you can have similar cut pieces at the top as you do at the bottom. That's always kind of what you're striving for is symmetry. So what I would recommend is first, trying to establish what your pan is going to be. So we're going to represent this as the three quarter inch shower pan. And then we're going to put a piece of tile down and that's will roughly be where our shower floor is going to be. Measure this down to the half waypoint and put your laser on there. Okay. Then just mark the tops of the tile. Now this isn't going to be hundred percent accurate. It could be an additional quarter inch or an eighth inch off. This is just kind of the rough framing stage but it'll give us a good reference of what we're going to have. So about a five and a half inch piece. So that works out well. So, so what I'm thinking is that I'm going to just set my niche right at that level because I know that when I come up here that this would come right to the, to the bottom part of my niche so that that'll work out well. And this is a 12 inch deep or tall niche. So we've got 12 inches. So let's just reference what 12 inches will be on our wall. So that would be like our top layer. So that'll be our top cut piece. That's nice and large, seven and a half inch piece. That works out great. We're gonna have to count for the actual weedy board thickness itself. So that's a half inch. Okay, and then we wanna account for the two by four that we wanna bring as far as our ledger. So we wanna come down two inches. 13 inches. So this will be our cut mark here and here. And then we'll take our sawzall and just lightly get this through. Try not to go through the drywall. So when I put it on here, there's very little reveal for pinching two pieces together. I recommend just adding another blocker on the side of this. Okay, that way when you put it in here, you got, you got movement both ways. 
and uh, then you have something to pinch both the board and the niche together. All right, so that's our niche. Now we'll move on to our plumbing. So yeah, with a layout like that with the plank tile, definitely makes it pretty simple, streamlined. And as you can see, I used the uh, Schluter edging. So we could definitely get on the topic of edging uh, on a complete different other video because that, that is endless for sure. Uh, as far as the edging goes on a lot of these things. Um, most of the common ones these days are using that Schluter metal edging around the corners, but Bullnose is still obviously really popular. So all these things you do really have to account for uh, when you're doing this. So, but uh, yeah, using those pre-made ni you know, niches uh, that made by Weedy, that, that was a whole Weedy shower. So that's why I went with that. They definitely do make it a lot faster to install because you're not dealing uh, you know, with having to fasten anything into place, you're basically just be able to just put that right in and, and make it pretty easy to install. So, um, but uh, yeah, Nick on Facebook uh, said, uh, did my own shower based on your videos, first shower, second time uh, to towel your, your, he was just mentioning the toweling videos are really helpful. So that, that's really great to hear uh, there, Nick. Uh, that's really, you know, that's really kind of doing all these different things over time. You know, you just do end up getting better over time, but some of these uh, shower niches, some of them are very ugly. Some of them are really, uh, <laughs> I was really happy to, to be a part of. Uh, these are some of the common ones in the corners, but this is yeah, the metal edging, very popular. Uh, this was a basically a uh, pencil trim. That's a, a nice, easy way to, to go about doing that. Uh, and a lot of these glass shelves, these are definitely something you have to kind of plan ahead for and order ahead of time because you want to have tempered glass when you're installing that and a lot of these you know niches are are custom made so you have to make them fit for the area that you're installing them but three eighths inch glass definitely looks pretty sharp here's one we did with a, um, a wains cotting that goes around the perimeter of the room so have that right at the base level of that shower niche definitely worked out really beautifully uh, so stuff like that is what really sets you apart and makes the things that look a lot nicer um, when you're able to just kind of walk into a bathroom and everything looks like it's in the in the perfect location and it's all done by planning ahead and being able to do this here's a couple other ones uh, this is another corner uh, niche uh, this one was actually pretty cool here let me get my head out of the way uh, kind of made it look like a wood frame look here in the back this is all actually cement tile back here really really fun project uh, cement tile really uh, gives I mean it this picture doesn't even do it justice in a lot of ways because it, it cement has kind of like this old uh, character it's it's not glossy it just has like a very nice vintage look to it and it really uh, really made a really nice look I, the cement tile is definitely fun to work with it can scratch easy so you have to be careful with that but uh, yeah you kind of can't really beat it here's one of my earlier ones we used the uh, basically um, the Wayne's cotting chair rail to go around the edges of of the area kind of bumps it out a little bit more makes it look a little more decorative same thing here this is like a marble chair rail and uh and then another metal long uh niche that has a, a base on it so i really do like having these bottom sills on here it kind of gives you a little bit more room for those bigger components uh, and this one was just kind of ridiculously large I, i'm not sure exactly why you needed a four foot tall niche but um yeah some of these are going way back i mean some of the yeah these are some of the horrible pictures back in the day i didn't used to have a very good camera this was uh I, again planning ahead you know the wayne's cotting going around the room making sure that niche kind of lines straight up with it so the chair rail kind of wraps around and you continue it now i did mess up here as you can see up in that corner i have that sliver these are like i said this is one of my earlier showers and those are the things that you learn I should have built this down so that I didn't have that sliver of tile up in that corner. That really kind of drives me nuts looking at it. This is another marble one with a pencil trim around the corner. And let me see here. So this one I'm really proud of on here on the left here, or maybe it's to the right on you. Uh, but these uh, arch niches, uh, I have a whole course that uh, goes over that as well but it really gave a, a real wow factor to the project. These are all travertine chair rail pieces. So you have to kind of 
plan ahead and, and cut these at the right angle so that they can curve around. Uh, this was my first uh, niche that I put in an outside exterior wall and I learned the hard way that you shouldn't do that. Uh, so this, this was an exterior wall. It was a two by four wall. It had foam insulation, like the foam board on the outside and in siding. And uh, I kept, you know, it kept cracking in these corners. So, I mean, I didn't, you know, obviously silicone those corners. I am, you know, it's been years and years since I've been there, but um, definitely something, it, it, a learning lesson. Don't be putting the niches in the back uh, on an exterior wall. You're just gonna end up having problems. Um, but then this one was pretty cool. You basically had it indented right where the shower faucet is. So you had to reroute some of your faucets around there. Matthew, thank you from Facebook. Um, and how, how long does it take you to do most of these bathrooms? Well, it's taken me forever on this particular project because I'm building the course out as I'm doing it. But normally most, I mean, it all depends on how big the bathrooms are. You know, it really, really depends. But a standard five by eight bathroom usually is seven to 10 days. Um, but again, it really depends on the, the intricacy of what you're doing. Uh, and that's one thing I found over time. Like once you start getting into higher end stuff, the more expensive, bigger bathrooms, uh, the longer you're taking to be there, you're, you're, you know, it's taken three, four weeks now. And I honestly really ended up making less money doing some of these high end showers than I did just doing the regular basic bathrooms. Here are a couple basic ones, just 12 by, or what, I can't remember what these things were, 12 by 16, I think. But here's another um, simple glass shelf in each one of these. I used to order a bunch of, um, you know, the local glass shop, I'd have them tempered and I'd order a bunch of different sizes that were kind of common so that I have them on hand because it's a real pain to get these things ordered and, and have in your hands uh, during the week that you're installing. So you kind of have to plan ahead for the glass. Uh, it, sometimes it could take two, two weeks to get, a, to get a piece of tempered glass to fit right. Um, but yeah, the, the, you know, the designs are endless, really. Um, these, are, these are, again, these are one of my most popular uh, build-outs or the ones in the corners where the tile kind of goes along with the wall. And, um, you know, I, I think they, they make a lot of sense because they're convenient right next to the shower faucet. Uh, and, yeah, so just all types of different ways of going about this. That's just a regular bullnose tile that goes around there. Uh, most of the time, the reason I, I use the bullnose on the outside as a picture frame is because most of them are only three inches wide, especially the porcelain ones. So you'd have to shrink, you know, the, the, niche, the niche in a two by four wall is three and a half inches deep. So you have to shrink that backer board even further out and three inches just isn't a whole heck of a lot. You end up with a, having a, a big half inch gap behind, um, you know, the, the, the bull nose if you try to run it on the inside of the niche. So that's why most of mine um, I'm actually doing on the outside uh, edge as a, as a um, picture frame, essentially. This, this was actually all glass tile behind me there. That was, uh, that was my first glass shower. That was kind of, kind of fun. And then another, there, again, another one of those corner niches. And then this is just another standard one with the, um, the plank towel. This was a cool, we ended up doing a, a glass uh, pebble stone floor. So that was kind of, definitely felt pretty cool to your feet. So, and that, that picture is awful. That was from quite a long time ago. And then we're back to uh, the house that I sold last year. So. Anyways, yeah, uh, thanks for everyone. Facebook, it was a great turnout tonight. Good 60 people all the way along here. Really great to see everybody uh, joining in on these because definitely takes some time to put them together and I hope they're, they're useful for you all. So do you ever do projects that include tiling the ceiling? That's what I'm doing here, my man. That's, uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this here in the basement. Uh, this basement bathroom, uh, I'm gonna end up doing the tile ceiling now we are only doing three by 12 tile, so it's not gonna be, uh, you know, like the super large tile, but if you just get yourself a decent uh, thin set, you're not gonna have a problem sticking anything to the ceiling. It really is not a big deal at all. Uh, it's just a matter of accounting for that thickness and making sure that it looks and you, you have to take a little bit more care with your cuts because when you come into a shower with a ceiling, you know, your eye goes straight to the corner. So you wanna make those joints nice and even all the way around and then you obviously want to be caulking it as well so blast blast tv on youtube thanks so much um but yeah so yeah thanks so much for joining me tonight guys 
definitely check out the course if you're interested. The DIY Geek membership uh, is going to have all of uh, my courses, including the basement bathroom. The basement bathroom is not sale on sale by itself. It's in the DIY Geek membership because I'm building it out as I go, and um, it's just not a complete process yet. But we're getting there. I also got some tile. Uh, some grouting, some drywall work, and we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be completing this, and it's gonna be another one done. So, all right, guys, thanks so much for meeting me tonight. I'll see you in the next live stream. Thanks.